When it comes to the options inside Generate Press for the mobile menu, it's fine, but it doesn't come with a lot of options. Here recently on a client project, I really spiced up what that mobile menu looked like, and it ended up being probably my favorite part of the entire project. Now, I'm not advocating that you need a really complicated or extravagant menu, but there are a couple little tweaks you can do to take it from something that's a little bit more boring like this to something that looks a little bit better designed like this. To do this is actually pretty simple. We're gonna use a couple Generate Press elements and just a little bit of CSS. So if you're interested in making your mobile menus look a little bit better, stick around and let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is hop in here to the customizer just to change a couple things. First, inside of menus, and then whichever menu you're using, you wanna click into that. And down here in the menu locations, you wanna make sure you have this box check that says off canvas menu. So that will make sure we're using this same menu inside the off canvas. Now we can go back out of here and we can go to layout, off canvas panel. And here first you wanna choose where you want this to show. So for me, I want this to show on mobile only, which is gonna show on mobile and on tablet. And then the style, I prefer the slide, the overlay kind of center aligns everything and I don't really care for that. And then the slide position you either have from the left or the right. I prefer the right so it comes out on the same side as the hamburger menu. Lastly here, we have the close button. You can either do it outside or inside. And for the purposes of this demo, the outside actually works a whole lot better. So now with that set up, we can go back out of here and inside of our colors. Now inside this off canvas panel, this navigation background is actually gonna be the background color of this entire panel. So you can see if I change this here to blue, the entire thing changes to blue. Now here in just a second, we're gonna replace this background color with an image, but you wanna have some kind of fallback in place. So let's go ahead and put a dark color here since all my text on top of it is light. Now we can go ahead and publish those changes and we need to go upload an image. And I'm gonna do this actually in another tab here because it's gonna be handy for us to have this customizer still open. So under media, you can just go to add new and you can upload the image you wanna upload from your computer. Once that image is uploaded, you can just copy that URL to your clipboard so you have that handy. And from here, we can jump back into the customizer. So we'll go back out here and to the additional CSS. Now you can get all this CSS down in a link of the video description below, but for now we'll go ahead and just paste that in here. And right here where it says image URL, you wanna grab that image you just uploaded for your background, copy that URL, and inside those two single quote brackets, you can just paste that image URL in. And now you'll see instantly we have this background image for our menu. Now let's go over just a couple things in here. You don't wanna mess with anything here, but down below you can play with all these settings. So of course we have our background image URL. We have the background position, which in my case I've set to center center, which works pretty well with this design. The background size is set to cover, so it fills the entire space. And then I have the opacity set to 0.3. Now of course you could change this, 0.9 is gonna make it really, really visible. And if you did something like 0.1, it would be very, very faded. So you're gonna have to play around with those numbers to get it looking right for your design. With that, we have all these changes in the customizer done and a nice, beautiful background. So this works on mobile as well as on tablet. So now we need to go about creating the logo that's gonna go above the menu and the buttons that are gonna go below it. For that, we're actually gonna use Generate Press Elements. So we'll go to the back end again and go into our elements and hit Add New, and we're gonna choose a block element. Now you can name this first one whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna call it slide out logo, just so it's very clear what it is. And here under the element type, we're gonna leave this as hook. And for the hook name, we're gonna scroll down this list inside the navigation. We wanna do inside slide out navigation. Now here in the display rules under location, you can choose where you want this to be seen. In this case, we're gonna say entire site. Now you can use the block editor to just insert the image. So we'll use an image block. We'll go to the media library and I'll click our logo. Now we've brought that in, we need to size it. Something like 50 pixels might work. And we'll go ahead and publish this and jump back into the customizer and take a look at what we've done. So we'll go into that mobile view. We'll refresh this here and open up our mobile menu. Now we can see it's inserted the logo, but it's crammed all the way at the top corner of this. And we need to give it some padding on the top as well as on the left. Now I wanna go ahead and match this with the width of 
where all these menu items are. So to check that, we can go in here into Layout, Primary Navigation, and on your desktop setting here, you'll have Menu Item Width. We can see that this is set to 24 pixels, and that's actually gonna control how much padding there is on each one of these elements inside your menu. So for that, we can jump back over here into this element. We'll grab our image, and under the spacing, we can give it 24 pixels of top margin and 24 pixels of left margin. We'll go ahead and update that again. Jump back into the customizer, click the logo to refresh, open this back up, and we can see now it's lining up a whole lot better. Of course, we still probably need a little space in between the logo and these menu items, so we can jump in here again, click the logo, and we can add something like 32 pixels of bottom margin. Go through that same process again, open it up, and now that looks pretty good to me. So now we need to go ahead and create the buttons for below the menu. So again, we're gonna go back into our elements here and we're gonna to have to add a second element. Again, we'll choose a block element and hit create. And we'll call this slide out after nav. Again, we're gonna leave this as the element type of hook and under the hook name, we'll scroll it here under navigation and we want it to be after slide out navigation. Again, for the location, we'll choose entire site. Now we're gonna to have to worry about that padding margin issue again. And since we're gonna have several blocks in here, instead of adding that padding or margin to each one of the blocks individually, what I'm gonna do is just wrap all this inside of a container. This way inside the container, I can give it some top margin. Maybe we'll say 40 pixels of top margin. And then on the left, we need to have our 24. So that will make sure that it's not crammed up against the left and that there's some space in between the menu items and these buttons. So what we'll do here first is just add a button. We can style this however we want. I'm gonna give it this light background color and a darker one on hover. And we'll make our text color the dark color from our palette. Now we want to probably change some of this padding here. I'm gonna go with maybe 32 pixels left and right. And since this is actually gonna be on mobile devices, I'm gonna give it a little bit less top and bottom padding, and we can give it some border radius to match the rest of our site. Here we can say, book your trip, and we can give it a link for now. I'll just put a pound sign in there. And with that, we can go ahead and hit publish, jump back into the customizer, refresh it here, and we should see our book our trip button here at the bottom. So just like that, we were able to create a logo above the navigation, the navigation, and then our button beneath it. Of course, you have full control over the block editor here, so you could add more things. For instance, we might wanna add a row of social icons. So to do that, I'm gonna use buttons again, and we'll click on our button here and give this some styling. So we might say we only want eight pixels of padding around the entire thing. We wanna have a clear background maybe white text and blue text on hover, even though it's gonna be a mobile device and won't have any hover states. We'll go into social, we can pick Facebook for the first one, remove the text, and give this the link to our social media page. And then of course we can just duplicate this button. So we'll duplicate it a couple more times here. For the second one, we can change the logo to Instagram. And for the next one, we can change it to something like Twitter. Of course, these are pretty close here, so I'm actually gonna grab the button element that wraps each one of these buttons, and we'll give it a little bit of top margin just to break it away from the edge of that button. Now we can hit update, and we can jump back into the customizer, refresh it, and we can see here, now we have our logo, our navigation, our button, and each one of our social media links. I've actually just set up my starter site to include most of these settings already baked in. So really all I need to do is go in there and change out anything I wanna change in the elements and change out the background image. So it makes this entire process only take just a couple minutes. If you wanna learn more about that starter site process, I do have a video popping up here. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. We'll catch you on the next video.